Welcome to my garage. We're gonna make a big pinwheel today. Using this big piece of aluminum and the other parts we got here. Bicycle hub, rivets, little aluminum plate, and some other tools. Let's do it. This pinwheel, once it's made, is gonna be installed at a park over in Monroe, Georgia. The ones I've done before were thinner, and I'm a little worried about that. The, this one's thicker. This is eighth inch. I did not mean to get that, well, the gauge I wanted, they didn't have that readily available. They offered to go one gauge thinner, but I was worried about being too thin, I'd rather err on it being thicker. And that's what I got. Um, yeah, it's a big piece of metal. It's gonna be harder to cut, <laughs> but, and harder to fold. Uh, but otherwise, I'm not too worried about the weight. It's still aluminum, the bicycle hub can handle a lot more weight. This is gonna be the center of our pinwheel. It's a bicycle hub, this happens to be a rear uh, bicycle hub, you can tell because of the uh, threads over here for the freewheel. It doesn't really matter for the, this purposes. What I like about this hub is it has a nice wide flange, this part here, because we're going to be using these spoke holes to rivet all of this together. Let's talk about uh, some of the tools and the parts we got. We got the piece of aluminum. I've got this aluminum plate. I've had it for a long time. Uh, we're gonna use this. We're gonna drill out a hole in the middle so it'll fit snug down on our hub. And then we'll, but we'll leave it this full diameter and we'll sandwich probably maybe the hub and the aluminum and this plate together to hold everything together. Uh, we'll be using rivets, eighth inch rivets. They may fit. Yeah, we're gonna have to drill these out slightly, just slightly. Uh, and then eighth inch rivet will fit just fine. Uh, I have them in a variety of lengths, depending on how thick this is. Uh, we've got rivet tool doing that. Some calipers to measure some things, tape measure. Uh, we got some wrenches here. We need to take apart the hub. Well, we don't have to, but it helps. And that's what we're gonna work on first. These are cone wrenches, they're called. They're very thin, eighth inch or so, less than two millimeter thick. They come in a variety of sizes, generally metric, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 millimeters do most bike wheels. Put one cone wrench on this nut, one appropriate size cone wrench on this nut, twist them away from each other, then we can start taking this apart. You might want to take it apart for a couple of reasons. One, we may want to re-space where this hub is on this axle. The way I'm installing this pinwheel, it is all going to be, um, it's, a, it's going to be cantilevered out, so it's going to be installed on one end, so I'm just, I can shift as much as I want of the axle over to one side. I probably don't need it, actually, need to, actually, but uh, that will gain me extra space away from the pole. The other reason you might want to take this part, especially if it's an older bike hub, those bearings might need some work in there. They might need some grease, other things like that. Uh, I'm going to find out. I got this hub on eBay, so let's see. It's an older looking hub, but it's got only cosmetic wear. I don't even, it doesn't look like there's ever been spokes seated on it. I don't think so. All right, so we get this out. Now we can slide out the hub. We do it gently. We hopefully won't disturb the bearings. I think these bearings look great. I don't think this hub has ever had any significant use. I think it's just old. Um, over here we've got, this is the cone. It's called, it fits up against the bearings, and the bearings sit on 
what is that, the race inside? I don't know, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, so I don't need to really grease it or anything, but, but I will take this opportunity to do some measurements. It's a little easier when I don't have the axle in the way. I want to see the diameter of the spoke holes. All right, so we got... All right, so we measured it. Put it back together. All right, let's find the center of this thing. So. All right, we're gonna mark the center. I'm not drilling all the way through. I'm gonna drill on low, just trying to get a mark. Beautiful. I have temporarily hot glued this plate to the hub. Uh, after I had cut the hole, it was pretty obvious it was off to the side, so I, I actually centered the hub off to the side a little bit then to kind of even that out. I mean, this circle may be off a little. That's not gonna matter much. As long as the main pinwheel is centered, it'll be fine. I wanna mark spoke holes and be able to transfer that and drill them out. And we've got our spots marked. Let's go ahead and really mark them. Thank you. 
The hub's gonna need a little drilling out too. These are just not quite, I think they're probably about, well, they're just too small. Start putting all this together. Uh, so first thing I need to do is select a rivet. Um, they have different lengths and they come in different uh, working lengths essentially. For instance, these are all same diameter, but obviously different lengths. The middle one. We can also add a washer, which I think we'll do. So let's go vertical. So the big plate we we'll put on one side, and then the hub on the other. Start with a rivet. Pass it through. Now I don't want to tighten it too much. There's a if you the flange has a little bit of a, a cant on it. If I snug this too far down, then the other side won't work very well. And of course, the odds of all of these holes lining up perfectly is not great. So we finished riveting the hub. We've got the hub attached all the way around with rivets. We've got the extra plate attached with rivets. We're good to go. Now what we want to do is cut in from the corner so we can start folding So I was working with the pinwheel and I got the big piece of metal with the hub fixed to the middle. But then we had all kinds of fails going forward because it was too hard. The first thing I had to do was cut in at the corners just like you do to make a pinwheel. The idea is just folding these over into these corners. The problem was again the thickness uh, so first, to cut this on the aluminum, I used a jigsaw. It worked great. Um, with thinner metal, I just used snips. But 
with the thicker one, the jigsaw worked great. So that solved problem one. Problem two, folding it. Uh, much like this cardboard, it's fairly stiff. And I fold it, I didn't want to crease it. I want a gentle curve. Oh, that proved extremely difficult. Uh, so I spent time trying, trying, trying. I couldn't fold it really by hand. Eventually, I had to beat it into submission. I simply got yeah, hammer and started going to town. And I used a few different tools. I used some wood to kind of hold it and, and try to get some leverage and bend it. And then I would smack it and did a lot of work. Eventually, I was able to fold the corners towards the middle, all four. And then right in the middle at the corner and the tip of each one of these, I put a, I uh, drilled a small hole so that when I line them all up, they would meet in the middle. Just like this. And then I just bolted it right there with the hub uh, being centered in the back. And actually the hub was really kind of on this side as I folded it in. So however you need to do it, you know, try if you've got thin enough metal, just manhandle it, push it, bend it. This metal was too thick. I had to get out the hammer and whack and whack and whack and, and it worked. We had a nice pinwheel. It works great. Thanks.